My name is Erica Carroll. I am the Education and Training Manager for Atlona, and with me here today is Justin Kennedy, Atlona's Product Manager for Control and Management. And in a moment, we'll hear from Justin as he guides us through a live demonstration of the new features and the latest Velocity update. The newest generation of Velocity version 2.0 was released at the beginning of the year with a robust feature set combining AV control, asset management, and room scheduling into a single platform. And today we'll talk about each of these major updates and show you a live demonstration in our Velocity platform. The AT, VGW, HW, and VGW, SW are the new gateways for Velocity 2.0. The VGW HW stands for Velocity Gateway Hardware. These are physical boxes left on site, like you see here, and um, they're left on the network for AV control management and scheduling. There's three versions with different room capacity configurations to suit a variety of AV integration requirements. Now, as you can see, the hardware gateways for up to three, 10, or 20 rooms are limited to those numbers for AV control, but can serve twice as many rooms for scheduling. So for instance, the HW3 supports up to three rooms for AV control and up to six rooms for room scheduling. And likewise, the HW20 supports up to 20 rooms for AV control and up to 40 rooms for room scheduling. Um, second is the VGWSW. This is the software gateway that's intended for installation on standard IT server infrastructure. It supports up to 20 rooms of control and 40 rooms of scheduling. Adding additional rooms can be done through a simple license called VRLSW or Virtual Room License Software. This is the software license to add room capacity to a VGW SW software gateway, providing one additional room for AV control and two additional rooms for scheduling. Now, the Atlona Management System, if you're familiar with this, or AMS, is now included in all gateways. Um, so this is used for configuring, deploying, and managing at Lona devices. Utilizing the network, AMS can automatically discover at Lona devices, allowing you to completely configure them for deployment, monitor the system and device status, plus schedule and push firmware updates from one centralized platform. Now, in the newest Velocity release, AMS has been integrated for a more streamlined installation. It's included, again, in all Velocity gateways, but if you would like just AMS on site without AV control, we recommend the VGW HW3. Additionally, AMS software is available as a free virtual machine download from atlona.com. Another major feature that is now available is room scheduling. In Velocity 2.0, we now have an integrated server that synchronizes with G Suite Calendar, or Office 365, allowing Velocity touch panels to display the room schedule as well as make odd ha ad hoc reservations. Now shown here is the VSP 800, uh, that stands for Velocity Scheduling Panel, eight inch. This is a new POE scheduling touch panel for Velocity. This eight inch touch screen can be used for either room scheduling or AV control, making it a single flexible touch panel platform for any application. It features a bright LED lighting on the bezel, allowing users to easily see meeting space status from down the hall or add emphasis to control functions such as AV mute or divisible room state. It's available in both black and white, and the panel may be used in either landscape or portrait mode with the GUIs responsively scaling to the desired orientation. And with that brief introduction, it's time to begin our live demo. So I will pass everything off to Justin. Thanks, Erica. Hope everyone's doing well. Thanks for joining. Uh, today, I want to give everyone a sneak peek of our upcoming release of Velocity 2.1. And as Erica mentioned, uh, one of the main sets of functionality that we've included in this new version of Velocity is the consolidation of both the AMS asset management system as well as the scheduling. And so what you'll also see along with the control is that we now have a uh, an updated navigation menu that allows for really those three main pillars within velocity so you've got your control pillar your scheduling pillar 
and your management pillar. And within, within each of these, you can configure your control, set up your scheduling, and of course, um, integrate the asset management uh, system from AMS. First, we're gonna take a look at AMS as it's integrated into Velocity today. Simply clicking on the management button and, and then the AMS device manager will take you directly to our device list for our system. And so you can see I've got several devices in my system that maybe I want to manage. You can also manage and configure all of the, the Alona devices in the system as well, including the OmniStream devices, um, setting up your video, uh, your, your virtual video routing uh, directly from AMS as well. Uh, but you also have the ability to manage and update firmware directly from the AMS uh, application here within Velocity. And so you can see I've got several devices that are running older firmware. And so I can simply click on those on that firmware and it gives me the option to then update this firmware uh, based off of the version that is currently on the device and the latest version that is available. Um, I also have the ability to schedule the firmware update. So if, for example, I want to schedule my firmware to be updated on the weekend, off hours, or at whatever time I would like, I simply open the calendar, select my time that I want to make the changes to, and that will then schedule that firmware update for, uh, for that particular time and date. At the same time, uh, the AMS application also allows for bulk firmware updates. And so if I have 25 devices in my system that all uh, have uh, firmware requirements that need to be updated, I can very, very simply add those uh, devices into my list and then select the update. Again, if I can choose to schedule from that perspective, and that will then provide all of the, uh, the firmware updates to those devices simultaneously. So it basically will push that, push that firmware down to those devices um, all at one time. So it's a great uh, it's a great time saver instead of doing the devices one at a time. It's an extremely efficient way to be able to manage the firmware and the devices inside of the system. So what I next want to show you is the scheduling integration. And so what I'll do is I'll actually go into my scheduling tab and I'll go into my manage. So as Erica mentioned, we do offer three uh, types of integration currently today. Uh, the first is uh, Office 365. It's a very common scheduling platform that's used uh, quite, quite, uh, quite often. Uh, but we also support the G Suite from Google. And there is an additional generic calendar that allows you to basically um, create a schedule in a CSV file and then upload that CSV to Velocity uh, from the scheduling perspective. So what I'm going to show first is the integration with, uh, with G Suite. Uh, so keep in mind that as you uh, integrate with G Suite, um, let, I'm gonna jump back here. So to create a G Suite integration, you simply click the add button. Um, the add button will then give me the option of which type of calendar integration that I want to look at. So in this case, we want G Suite. Um, we then have an alias that we can give this so if we want to call it Google or calendar information. Um, now keep in mind that G Suite is typically set up by the IT administrator for the facility. And within that, uh, within that setup, there are several things that have to actually take place. So, so keep, keep in mind that that is all set up in advance prior to, um, to integration with Velocity. Uh, but we do have a very nice and comprehensive room scheduling setup guide that is available on the Atlona website that will walk you through step-by-step -step, um, detailed instructions on setting up the, basically exposing the APIs from G Suite. And so once you've done that, um, basically, what G Suite will do will give you uh, the ability to add uh, an, an account key file. And so this account key file is, is, again, set up in G Suite. And as I go in, I set my account key file, and then I add, my, add this to my system, and it will then set up my calendar resource. Um, I then can go in and add the resource emails for the rooms, the resource room calendar, and of course, I can then associate those with the specific rooms that I want that calendar to be functional for. Uh, becomes a very simple integration process. Um, again, once everything is set up on the, on the Google side, the integration into Velocity is extremely simple. Um, we can also set up uh, just a quick walkthrough for Office 365. Again, I would click my Add button. Um, I'm gonna select my Office 365 for my calendar integration. I can set an alias. And then I have the Office 365 admin email and password. And again, this is going to be the data that is provided by the IT admin. Um, normally, they will be the ones that will enter this, this information so that the admin password is, 
uh, is protected and not uh, not given out. Uh, but they're going to enter that data there, and then they're going to create the calendar integration. And so I've created the calendar integration for Office 365 already, so we can walk through that. Um, I've got my my admin username and password. Um, this is our Exchange Web Service URL that's uh, that's entered. Uh, and for Office 365, I think it's the same for pretty much everybody. Um, the resource email, again, this is going to be set up within Outlook, and the rooms will be given email addresses. So the, the resource emails are added, and then I simply select the room that I want to associate with that particular scheduling panel. Once I get everything set up, I've saved my changes, I sync my touch panel, and that then gives me the ability to have my calendar integration. So at this point, um, what I'm going to do is show you a simulated touch panel, scheduling touch panel. Uh, keep in mind that the way that our scheduling panels work is that they must use the either the VSP or the VTP panels. Um, so this is just for demonstration purposes so that you can see how we can book an ad hoc meeting. Um, but if I go into my room, for example, um, you can see that I have two meetings already scheduled today. What this will do is actually launch my, my calendar view directly on my touch panel. If I want to add a new meeting or start a meeting, let's say I want to ad hoc start a meeting right now, I simply click my start button, select the time that I want the meeting to, the length of time that I want the meeting to list, and I click my start button. And that will then set up my meeting and start my meeting and give me the, uh, give me the, the confirmation that the meeting has started there. Um, I also can add uh, a meeting later in the day, and so you can see I've got my, uh, my calendar view here it will tell me when the, the room is booked and when it is open. Um, at the same time, I also have the option to select a different room. So for example, if there's another room that I wanted to, to uh, schedule, I can select that room and book that room nearby as well from the scheduling touch panel that's outside the room. Um, all of this becomes a very simple and easy integration with, uh, with Velocity. And it really gives us a strong focus, not just on asset management, not just on scheduling, uh, but also the control. And so all three of those now combine into the single application, simplify the whole process for control, asset management, and scheduling within the Velocity 2.0 platform. All right. I think now we'll open up uh, our time for Q&A. Yep. So... Um, thank you so much for that demo, Justin. I do have a few questions here about um, Office 365 and supporting modern authentication, which uh, is going to be mandatory this fall. Or do we have that on the roadmap, or is that something that we're supporting? Yes, absolutely. So this this is the initial release supporting the, the standard Office 365. There will be additional functionality that we will be adding in over time. And so as, as you come across those requests from your customers, um, please pass those along to us so that we can add those to our to our feature request list and we will look at integrating those in the future. Awesome. So um, another question here, can you have multiple rooms in the same key file or is it one room to one key file? Yes, you can have multiple rooms in the same key file in G Suite. Um, there is a way to actually um, consolidate those inside of the, the Google app where it will allow you to basically build grouping. Uh, within within that key and that's how you can actually build the the room grouping uh, inside of the application perfect um when it comes to ams and firmware updates will the mass firmware update capability complete firmware updates for both the main firmware and the supplemental firmware thinking specifically for the 510w when you need to update the master firmware and the second set of firmware found elsewhere in the gui Yes, so it will it will take care of both sets of uh, firmware for those types of devices. Okay. Um, going back to scheduling, can scheduling support an ERP along with or in lieu of Office 365, or is there an SFTP option? So currently today, uh, it's just the the standard Office 365, but again, that could be something that we could look at adding uh, in a in a future release. Okay, awesome. Um, let's see. I think, here we go. Can you limit, 
can you limit the option to do book bookings on another room? So can you limit the rooms that you see or is there a limitation there that you can set? Uh, yes, so the, you, you can, uh, the, there is a way to group rooms inside of Velocity and that would give you the ability to um, not have rooms, certain rooms show up um, on the available list should you choose to do that. And how customizable are these scheduling panels? Can you add a customer logo to them? So great question. So in the current template one, the theme one that we have, um, it is a fixed template. What we are looking at is adding additional scheduling templates that would allow you to upload a company logo, uh, basically you know, make a, a variable or a dynamic image that could be changed based off of the customer that's coming into the building um, for the meeting. So um, look, look forward to looking for those in, in the near future for, for some new templates on the scheduling side. Awesome. Um, does Velocity only sit on an IP network or can it integrate directly with a matrix switch based on room control system or systems? So yes, so you, uh, it is an IP based control platform, um, but it does integrate with serial devices through, uh, through what's called our VCC um, that allows the uh, IP to serial integration. I'm not sure if that's the question that was asked, but that's I think the question is, can you control a matrix switch or that system within a particular room without it sitting on the network? Yes, absolutely. It can be an RS-232 device that we can then connect to with the VCC. But it does have to sit on the network? Uh, no, it, it, the, 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 but the gateway does. To be on the network, correct. It doesn't have to be yes. on a public network. It can be on a completely independent uh, VLAN that's completely separated from anything else, any other network. It, it just needs to be a, a network device. Okay. Um, what are the requirements of the hardware and software running Velocity when you have the software version? Um, so those specs are available on the website. Um, and without me giving you incorrect information, I don't, uh, I don't have it memorized off the top of my head, but um, it, it is running on VirtualWare, uh, Virtual Machine, and uh, it, it basically, again, starts at 20 rooms, and you can add up from there. Um, based on how you set up your virtual machine, your processing, and your memory um, will be part of your limitations on how many rooms you can, uh, you can integrate into the, the SW version. Okay. What about upgrading an old gateway? Can I upgrade that to version 2.0? Absolutely. The, the 2.0 version is available for download from the website. Mm -hmm. you, can, uh, you can also, if, you're, if your gateway is currently connected to the internet, you, there is an option under the system settings to uh, go to the firmware and check for updates and it can download it automatically for you to the gateway. So yes, you can update the, the older gateways to, uh, to the new platform. Um, what I will say is that you are Based on the new uh, the new room structure within Velocity, you are grandfathered to however many rooms you have on that current gateway, um, up to three. Um, it, so, for example, if you have ten rooms on an existing VGW250, the HW250, you would have those same number of rooms. Um, if you had one room, it would limit you to three. So keep that in mind as you do your upgrades that it does um, have a reflection on the, uh, the room count that is supported. Awesome, I have a couple of AMS questions here also. Um, sure. Does AMS now span VLANs? Uh, so that is definitely something we are looking at adding for a future release. Currently it is, um, it is a single VLAN application and we will be um, looking at making changes there in the future. And are there any plans to add any third-party devices for management with AMS? Uh, definitely. So that is uh, also on the longer-term roadmap where we will be um, integrating with additional devices from a management perspective for support, um, not necessarily firmware uh, management, but certainly um, asset management. So um, tracking device um, data, analytics, those types of things that we would be, uh, that would be looking at implementing in future release. Um, what about controlling third-party devices? And that, that's still available within um, velocity curtains and shades and screens. Absolutely. We support thousands of third-party devices through our driver tool, uh, which is actually mm -hmm. also built into velocity. Um, if for some reason there is a device that is not um, in our current driver database, 
Um, we have a tool inside of Velocity that allows users to build their own drivers, capture their own IR files or IR devices, uh, and so that is available there. Uh, in some cases, the devices may be more complex, and in that situation, um, we do have the a process where you can request the driver to be built for you. Uh, it does take some time, so um, you typically we typically are asking for about a four to six week turnaround time on some of those more complex drivers, which could be video conferencing systems, DSPs, lighting control systems, those types of things. Um, and a lot of times we will ask that we get the device in hand so that we can test and confirm that the driver is doing what it's supposed to do. Uh, but the, the best bet is try to build the driver on your own inside of Velocity's driver tool. Um, it's very simple to use. Uh, and there's re very detailed instructions in the manual on how to build the drivers out. But basically, you just need the API protocol manual for the device. And you can, uh, you can basically input that information into the driver tool, and it will build the driver. Cool. Um, can the hardware gateway happily live on two networks, basically trying to create an AV network so the gateway sits on the client's main network? Excellent question, and absolutely the, the answer is yes. So the gateways, both the, all of the, the hardware gateways have two network ports. And so you can isolate the control network completely separate from the corporate network um, on the gateways themselves. Um, great. And can I configure uh, the scheduling device via APIs, or do I always need to go to Velocity? Uh, the scheduling uh, is configured in Velocity, and basically we're, what we are doing under the hood is doing that two-way connection, that two-way integration with either Office 365 or G Suite, so that as you do an ad hoc booking from the touch panel, we are actually also going back to the scheduling service and booking the room, blocking the room um, inside of the application as well, the, the scheduling application as well. And so that's why we are doing that configuration directly on, uh, on Velocity. Okay, and is it possible to customize the LED color, for instance, yellow for the 15 minutes before the meeting? Uh, yes, so uh, the, the panel does support the ability to customize the LED colors, and we will be adding that functionality into the application uh, very soon. Okay. Um, we're looking for some clarification here. Velocity 2.0 now uses room count instead of device count. Correct. That is correct. Okay. Three, three rooms, 10 rooms, 20 rooms, and then the software version is starting at 20 and up. So when you're adding them, can you stack gateways to add more, or would you end up with multiple systems if you had more than one gateway? So you will have, uh, once you, let's say you reach the, the 20 limit on, on the VGW HW20, um, you would add a second gateway, and you would configure your system in that second gateway. However, we are looking into some options for our Velocity Cloud that would consolidate your uh, your projects into a single space. Awesome. There's also a question here. Um, is there a device limit within rooms? Uh, device limit within rooms. So because it's an IP-based system, you're typically looking at a maximum um, of 250 devices. Um, and you can you can spread that out through the rooms however you need to. Okie dokie. And is there any recommendation on doing maintenance rebooting to the gateways? Uh, so the gateways are actually built to, to run 24 hours a day. Um, there are options to reboot the gateways. There are options to, to schedule a reboot of the gateway should you choose to do so. Um, but they are built to uh, as a robust appliance to run 24-7. To run, uh, is there a charge for the custom device build request? Custom device build request? I think this would be a driver. Oh, for a driver. So there is not mm -hmm. a charge, there is not a charge for a driver build. Uh, but what I will say is that it's, it sometimes can take some time to get the API protocols from the manufacturer. Um, in, in many cases, we may need the device in house so that we, once we build the driver, we can test it. So there's no charge, but it does take some time. So keep that in mind. Awesome. And um, there's another question here about PoE lighting. Is that in controllable within Velocity as well? Do we if, have PoE lighting? If there's a manufacturer that 
that has a POA lighting controller that has an API, we could integrate. With. Okay. Um, and a little bit more clarification again about the 250 device limit. Um, does that apply to the server as well? So the server is, is actually uh, a little bit different, right? It's a little bit more robust. And so you're actually, uh, from a network perspective, you're setting up that server based off of how you want to handle the, uh, the, the devices. So it's, it's actually much more than 250. So depending on how you set up the, the virtual machine. Okay. And when you have um, less than 20 rooms, but you still want to use the server, can you do that instead of using the appliance? Absolutely. The server can support one room if you just want to run if you want to run it on your own virtual machine, on your own blade, and run it in a virtual machine on your server, you you can you can start with one room and you can go up. Um, by uh, out of the box, it supports, or out of the out of the software because it's not really a box, right? Um, out of the out of the uh, software gate, um, it'll support up to 20, and then you can add additional license. So certainly, you could start it with one or two or three rooms if you wanted to go that route, and then expand from there. Okay, and I know in previous versions of Velocity, we had redundancy. Is that still a feature within the 2.0 firmware? It is, yes, we do still support redundancy. Um, what we're actually also looking at is uh, a, an additional option for redundancy or, or possibly even a change to the, the way that redundancy works from an IT perspective. Um, so today it's really kind of a hardware uh, redundant solution. Um, but we are actively investigating options for a future IT-based redundancy. Okay. And how many years warranty for both the gateway and the panel? Uh, the touch panel is a one-year warranty. The gateway, I believe, is a 10-year warranty. 10-year warranty. Perfect. Um, so that takes us to the top of the hour we do have a handful of questions that were not answered but just be sure to check your inbox and we'll make sure to get those answered for you as well thank you so much justin for joining us today and thank you everyone um, for your time and questions and um, we're excited to roll out this new velocity 2.0 and again uh, thank you for showing us 2.1 that was a, a fun little insight so Thank you all, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Thank you.